Hello there, my name is Monica Burns and welcome to today's episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast. It is 2024 and whether you're joining for the first time, a hundredth time or for the 200th time, I am so glad you're here. I have lots of exciting things in store for you this year. Each episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast is designed to give you ideas you can try yourself, share with a colleague or bookmark for later in the school year. Get ready for stories from my time in the classroom, the work I do now with schools and districts, and my travels to different ed tech events, as well as practical ideas and inspiring stories from new guests each month. If we mention something you'd like to check out, you'll find the link to it in the show notes. So don't forget to head to my website, classtechtips.com slash podcast for all of the show notes and resources from today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Activate, which is on a mission to reintroduce play and education at every level. Activate starts with a kit, literally a box, that has games, activities, brain teasers, and more that help kids engage with each other without being tied to the screen. And there's great news for teachers. Activate also comes with Play, an AI-powered app just for them that instantly curates activities in context. Have 13 kids, 10 minutes, two cans and a piece of paper, and maybe a student in a wheelchair? Well, Play will instantly give you an activity for exactly that scenario. For any and every scenario, check it out at unboxactivate.com. That's unbox, U-N-B-O-X, activate, A-C-T-I-V, and the number eight, dot com. This week's episode is titled How to Use Social Media as Lesson Inspiration. And social media is often seen as a distraction. I know I try my best to keep my phone on the other side of the room if I'm working on something important so I'm not tempted to scroll or go look at anything. But you might be able to use social media for inspiration instead of just as a distraction. And there are creative and unexpected ways to incorporate social media into a variety of aspects of teaching. Today, we'll talk specifically as inspiration for student learning experiences. We're going to look at how you can integrate particular aspects, certain aspects of social media into your teaching methods, into activities that you try out. And I really do think it's a great way to boost student engagement, foster creativity, and really provide some real world context for your next lesson. Now, this topic of social media inspired creative projects is one I've spoken about at a variety of conferences over the past few years. I think it's a really nice, fun lens to talk about creativity in the classroom. And that's what we're coming to together for today's episode. So we're going to get into about almost a dozen ready to customize ideas that you can use that are inspired by social media. So you'll think about what your students are working on, what your goals are, what tools you have access to, and take these ideas and run with it. So let's jump into the list of some favorite ideas for using social media as an inspiration this year. First on our list, our historical figure, Instagram posts. Now for this one, students can create Instagram posts from the perspective of a historical figure, perhaps capturing a key moment or a thought from their everyday life. This activity encourages research and creativity in presenting history or historical information and ask kids to combine text and images. For this type of activity, kids might snap their own photo, they might find something online, you might introduce a generative AI tool if that's been on your list of things to share with kids, and you might use a tool like Adobe Express to have kids create graphics. I love all things Adobe. I've done some work with their team, and as we move through our list today, I'll mention a tool or two for each of these ideas. So first up were those historical figure Instagram posts. Next, 
is science research infographics. Kids can create infographics on really any area, but for number two on our list, we're thinking about how they might summarize scientific research or experiments. Now, there are lots of infographic tools. Genially is one I featured on the blog in the past. I'll link out to them in today's episode, and this activity of making a science research infographic can help kids visualize complex data, help provide a creative way to share what they have learned, and give something they can tell other people about, right, or have that digital product they can share in oodles of ways. Next up is to tweet a poem. Now, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, right, might be your inspiration for this, even if you never use the word Twitter. It's more about composing short poems, maybe something like a haiku, that fit within a particular character count constraint. So 280 characters is the limit on Twitter, limit on X. So you might use that or you might just pick another number. So this activity can encourage kids to write in a concise and impactful manner. So instead of having them post on Twitter, which I would not recommend you do, you might have them share in a collaborative space, maybe something like Padlet. Padlet doesn't have like a character count constraint like Twitter, but it is something where they might count characters first or use word count inside of a tool like Google Docs and then add it into a space like Padlet. Next up are animated videos. Now, I'm a big fan of Adobe Express. Mentioned them before as a graphic tool. You might use their animated video tool for this one. If you haven't, totally free. Highly encourage you to give it a spin. I'm recording this for you in the end of March, even though it'll go live a bit later in the spring. And just like a week or two ago, I was with um, Adobe at their office in New York, leading a workshop for some teachers. It was right around St. Patrick's Day. So I showed off the Animate with Audio tool inside of Adobe Express, and I made a shamrock talk. (laughs) So you can basically pick an avatar. I did a blog post that I'll link out to called How to Make an Animated Winter Video that takes a winter spin on this, but if kids have seen animated videos on social media, you might use that as an inspiration really any time of year. Next up is a geography photo collage. If your kids are learning about different parts of the world, they might use a creative tool, maybe something like Canva, to create photo collages of different geographical locations. This can engage students with a subject like a part of the world and encourage exploration, even if they are a bit far away from wherever they're learning about. You might have them even draw photos or draw pictures in addition to taking photos, snap a picture and combine all of that into a collage using a digital tool. Our next one on our list are mathematical concept videos. So you can have kids create short videos, maybe something similar to the length of what you could share on TikTok. So maybe saying it's going to be 15 or 30 or 60 seconds and kids can explain a mathematical concept or a problem solving technique. Adobe Express has vertical video options. You could do this on Microsoft Flip. They also have music you could choose from. You could even use iMovie or clips with your students too. So lots of video creation tools and having students explain the steps to share a problem, to solve a problem might be one way to put this medium into practice with a mathematical spin. So far on our list of social media inspired uh, lesson ideas, we've got historical figure Instagram post, science research infographics, tweeting a poem, making an animated video, creating a geography photo collage, or even a mathematical concept video. So let's keep going. I've got a couple more for you. Next up is a character blog. Kids can write blog posts as a character from a book. They can pull quotes or textual evidence to support their decisions as writers. So this activity would require them to think about what they've read and gain a deeper understanding of character development and narrative. If they're doing this from a book, they might say they might write their blog post and then at the very bottom, instead of like a citation, they could say this was inspired by chapter this or that, or I made a connection to this line in the text, right? So they could get really specific with that textual evidence if you want them to. 
Next up is a virtual book club. And you might have heard, or maybe you participate in book talk, <laughs> or how other social media sites like TikTok have really helped connect readers with new book recommendations. So you can encourage students to create a short video recommendation to convince their classmates to check out a favorite book. So if you are looking for kids to talk more about their books, you might use book talk as inspiration. Now, I love memes. If you've ever used memes with students, you know they probably love them too. On the blog, I featured a tool called Anti-Matter, and there are other tools for meme making too, but that's one that sets up kids for success with creating and sharing memes on really any topic. You could also use a Google Slides deck, like or one slide in a Google Slides deck. I'll give you a template in the show notes if you're curious about this for a meme activity too. I love keeping kids in spaces they already are. So if you're already in a spot like Google Slides, awesome. But if you're looking for a standalone tool, Antimatters one I featured on the blog in a partnered post maybe a year and a half ago now. And that's one you might want to take a peek at. Next up for some inspiration here is a foreign language translation. So you might take a short piece of text, like a social media style update, and have students translate them into a different language. So if you're working in a foreign language classroom, this is a nice way for them to practice translating a short piece of text. And you might even find messages from a real life account, have kids translate those, or write your own short messages as a way for them to translate almost like they are solving a puzzle as they're moving from one piece or one caption to the next. Now I've got two more on the list today of social or ways to use social media as lesson inspiration. Next up is a stop motion science experiment. I love stop motion videos. I think it really asks kids to slow down and think about what they want to happen next. So you might create stop motion videos of science experiments with kids for that purpose of simplifying or breaking down complex concepts. This can help kids think really deeply about each step of a process and have a short video to share with their classmates. There's a handful of tools that you could use. Stop Motion Studio is one that's been pretty popular and that might be the best choice for you too for this type of video creation. So last on our list today of how to use social media as lesson inspiration is to have students create a visual board of notes. Pinterest is a popular tool for gathering ideas that can act as a source of inspiration. I've been sharing on Pinterest, gosh, if I count, it's probably a decade now that I've been using that as a tool to share different resources. It's totally a favorite, but you could um, simulate this type of visual space for kids too. You might have them use, say, Google Slides and each kid has a slide or each, I, each slide they use as an idea. So like it's their deck with maybe 15 slides and 15 ideas. So different ways you might try this, or you could introduce a tool like Bubble Up. I feature them in a partnered post on the blog last year. It's a super cool tool for collections and collaboration. So lots of options for a visual board of notes. So as we looked at today, using social media in the classroom as inspiration, It's just a great place to gather ideas and doesn't mean you have to put kids in a social space, right? So you don't have to get rid of any old teaching methods or old concepts, but this might be an extra layer that excites and engages students really at at all levels. So as you look for inspiration from how we all interact with social media, right, you might think of even more ideas that you could add to our list. And I, of course, would love to hear them if I see you at a conference or event this spring or summer. Always love chatting with podcast listeners if you've got a favorite idea or you of course can reply to my Monday newsletter. I get and read all of those emails or you can find me at Class Tech Tips on Instagram or Twitter if you want to send me a quick message. So let's make this ed tech easy with a few key points from today's episode. Use social media to inspire engaging classroom experiences. Try cross-curricular activities like historical figure posts and science infographics. Use social media to enhance engagement and encourage collaboration. 
Incorporate student-friendly tools to create a dynamic and social learning environment. Remember, you can find the show notes and the full list of resources from today's episode by heading to classtechtips.com slash podcast. Today's episode is number 263 and ready for you to explore. I've got all of the resources right there on the page that's dedicated for today's episode. So you can find some templates, some different links to favorite resources, all sorts of things on that show notes page. A big thank you to our friends at Activate for sponsoring today's episode. They're using a blend of old school and new school to turn spaces between spaces into healthier places. Visit unboxactivate.com, that's U-N-B-O-X, active8, A-C-T-I-V, the number eight, dot com, and use promo code activate Monica for $50 off your first box and three free months of play app access. This March, we'll celebrate five years of the Easy EdTech podcast. To help celebrate, I'm hoping you can do us a favor. Leave a rating or review for the podcast wherever you're listening today. Spotify will let you tap on the stars and Apple Podcasts will let you tap on the stars too and leave a one or two sentence review. A big thank you in advance for helping us get ready to celebrate this March.